Last episode, I explained a few video requirements for web stories and told you about a great free tool. And today we'll actually use our newfound power. If you haven't watched the first episode, go check it out now. After discussing theory last time, we're going to get practical and use the tool AVDMAX for two tasks. Compressing, or what we call encoding in the video world, and splitting the video into smaller chunks. All right, let's do this. Oh wait, I don't even have a video yet. Okay, great, let me shoot something really quick on my phone. Okay, camera app. Do not panic, this is only a test. Your regular programming will resume in a minute. Okay, that should work. One neat trick to actually get this video onto your computer is with the Google Photos app, since it backs up everything and I can go ahead and just open it on my laptop. All right, here's my video I just recorded. I download it by clicking on this button here and voila, I have a video. Once you have AVDMAX open, you can drag it right into the app. Now you also get a preview of the video, so you know you selected the right one and scroll through it. Neat. Okay, on the left side is where the magic happens. Remember, we want to compress our video to make sure that it loads fast. And the best, most compatible video format for that is MP4 with an H.264 codec. So we're going to use exactly that and select MP4 AVC H.264 in the video output menu. Under audio output, I'd recommend picking AAC LAV. And finally, under output format, select MP4 Muxer. That's the file extension or container format we talked about earlier. You could hit the save button now and out comes a video. You know what? Let's actually do that. Your regular programming will resume in a minute. And here we go. We got a new video file. And oh my god, it is so much smaller. But there's a little more grain in artifacts. The quality is a little worse. And you know, this is where the fun really starts. You are in full control of how small you want that file to be at the expense of quality. If you go back to that left sidebar in AVDMAX, Click the configure button under the video output and you'll see a highly intimidating option screen. But worry not, here's a quick and easy way to get started. Uncheck use advanced configuration first. Now click into preset and select something like very slow. This means that your file will take longer to save, but it will be smaller with the same quality. Further down under encoding mode, it should already say constant rate factor. You can experiment with the other options in this drop down too. For instance, there's a way of saying, I want this file to be one megabyte large, you figure out how to do that. Which can be pretty neat if you have a specific file size target. But CIF is by far the easiest to use. Now on that slider, the lower you go, the higher quality your video file will be at the expense of file size. In return, the higher you go, the smaller the file will end up at the expense of quality. Let's actually give this a try to show what happens. I'm just gonna use the maximum CIF, which is frankly absurd, and hit save. As you can see, the file is even tinier than before. But looking at it, it is also garbage. Yes, not the best compromise. For most videos in web stories, I'd recommend a CIF of about 23, which is usually a nice compromise between quality and file size. Now, in the audio output menu, it's kind of the same idea. Under configure, you don't get a slider, but something called bitrate. The higher the bitrate, the better the audio quality. 128 is a pretty good default for most video in web stories but you can experiment going higher or lower and listen to the output if you like. And finally, no need to worry about the options under output format. Okay, one more thing about video compression. Some video files come in very high resolution. Even some phones nowadays shoot 4K video. If the resolution, meaning the visual size of your video or how many pixels each frame has is super, super large, I encourage you to make it smaller for your web story. This is also something you can do with AVDMAX. To do this, click on the Filters button under Video Output, then double-click on SWS Resize. What you want to target is a resolution called 720p, which means 720 pixels on the smallest side. Since my video is vertical, let's click into the Width field and type in 720. Nice! Then click into Resize method and set it to Spline, which leads to a higher quality output, and hit OK. You now see a new filter under Active Filters. Cool! Click close and then simply save the video again with a save button. As you can see when previewing the video, it is now significantly smaller visually, which reduces the file size even further. I got the power to make things tiny now. <laughs> Time for step two, splitting the video, the much more difficult part. Just kidding, this is actually super easy. Close the current source video in AVDMAX with the command W shortcut or by going to file and then closed. Now drag the new video you just created in. 
We don't want to compress it again. We just want to slice it into pieces. So click on the drop downs in video output and audio output and select copy, which tells Avi Dmax to, well, do nothing. Now look at the bottom icon bar under the video slider. That red A is the set start marker button. That means I want to start the video from here. So use the slider to where you want the video to start at and hit that button. You'll now see a selection box. The button right next to it is the set end marker button and well, it does what you probably expect. It tells Avi Dmax where to stop. So let's pick a good time to end and hit it. Excellent. Now all that's left is to click the save button, pick a file name and voila! Almost instantly we have a perfect cut slice of our original video. Your regular programming will resume in a minute. Look, this might feel super cumbersome, but when you drag these videos into your web story editor, you know for sure they work and load very quickly for all of your users. And isn't that a warm fuzzy feeling? But even better, you just learned some skills that are great additions to your creator toolbox. Now you can make tiny, amazing videos. I personally like to have enough knowledge in every profession connected to content creation to be dangerous. Until next time, onwards.